the classroom discussion for December 19th, 2011. The Dust Bowl. The information we covered today was about the Dust Bowl. The Dust Bowl was the worst environmental disaster in American history. It hit all major cities in the Midwest and on the East Coast. It caused street lights to come on at midday. The dust cloud and the dust storm was so dark that lights felt like they needed to come on. A dust storm that was 1,800 miles wide. From the Great Plains to the Atlantic Ocean was how long it stretched. It carries three tons of dust for every American alive. Ships stop off the East Coast because they don't know what is happening. They've never seen anything like it and the city of New York is being covered by an entire cloud of dust. The storm comes from 2,000 miles away in a dead zone located in the states of Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, and Colorado. The Great Plains used to be the most fertile grasslands on earth. The topsoil was six feet deep, but now has been plowed and used by four generations of farmers. The sun has dried up this ground. These are very important. These are the main reasons for the Dust Bowl. There was an extended drought and a long period of time. Don't think of just a month of no rain. It's more like June, July, August, September, October, an extended drought. The second reason is high winds. A continual state of winds blowing very, very strong were another reason why the Dust Bowl took place. And then the third reason was the loss of millions and millions of tons of topsoil. Those three things are very important. By 1930, the rains had stopped. The best soil is blown away by the wind. The tiny particles are then suspended in the air. We discussed a freak-like thing happens where the static electricity builds up between the earth and the dust. The static electricity sucks more and more of the dust up into the air. The situation we discussed is that the air is almost like a magnet for the dust because of the static electricity. I used the example in class of a sock being stuck to a shirt out of the clothes dryer. The static electricity just pulls it to it. The dust goes up to 10,000 feet and is pushed by the high altitude winds. Think about how high 10,000 feet is a dust cloud that goes from the ground up 10,000 feet. Once it gets up that high, then the winds up above really push it. A cold front combines with a warm front to produce the perfect conditions for this dust storm. The storm travels at 65 miles per hour. I gave the example in class that a thunderstorm containing a tornado or a lot of thunder and lightning normally travels at 35 to 40 miles per hour and that's considered fast. Yes, a tornado's winds travel at 200 miles an hour, but that is inside the tornado and does not literally move 200 miles per hour. There is enough static electricity within this dust storm to power New York City. Some people go days without seeing daylight due to the size of the storm. There is a mass exodus of farmers and settlers from the Great Plains. Exodus means a departure of a large number of people. So imagine a large number of people, of farmers, leaving the Great Plains. Farmers lose $25 million a day, and most of them lose their family farms. Now, to clarify, one farmer doesn't lose $25 million. Combined, they are all losing $25 million a day. 250,000 people begin to flee the Great Plains for the East Coast or move to cities. Two-thirds of the people in the Great Plains stick it out and survive. The assignment that the students were given today had two questions worth 50 points apiece. 
The first question was, what things led up to the Dust Bowl happening? Almost thinking of what were the causes. The second question asked what the effects were of the Dust Bowl and how it changed um, life in the Great Plains and life in the United States. Hopefully from this information you will be able to answer those two questions effectively.